Welcome back. Welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about integrated rate laws. This is a follow up uh, to the previous video on differential rate law. So, students get these two confused a little bit. Uh, the differential rate law, remember, is when you use multiple trials. It's called the method of initial rates because you're only concerned about the beginning um, rate. The big difference with integrated rate law from an experimental standpoint is that you only use one trial. Okay, you don't do the multiple trials. So when you approach a problem, you'll seem, you seem to only have one, one bit of information. Maybe it's integrated. Another clue to integrated rate law is that it is, um, it is time elapsed. So if you think back to differential rate law, there was no discussion of time. Uh, you, you just take uh, your trials and you run them and you, you're just worried about the, the very beginning rate. For integrated rate law, you're going to take a reaction. Let's say this is our reaction of A to B from previous. And we get A. All we're going to do is start the timer, start the reaction, and then we're just going to measure the concentration of A as time progresses. And so we may get any sort of graph. Well, let's just start with this one. Which is, which is basically the simplest. We know that in any reaction, as time uh, elapses, um, this, is, this is a little bit, ignore equilibrium, okay? So let's assume we're not dealing with equilibrium effects. But if we start a reaction, then the reactants are going to decrease in concentration as time progresses. In this very simple one, since it's linear here, you can tell that there's there is a consistent decrease as time progresses progresses here a doesn't get chewed up faster and faster which is what you would see if your graph looks something maybe not like that i didn't draw it exactly right but this will show a consistent decrease in a and this would show an inconsistent decrease in the concentration of A as time elapses. So when we deal with integrated rate law, really our job is to figure out what is that order. Like this one here is what we would call zero order. Zero, let's put more O's in there. Zero order. Because it's a consistent decrease. It doesn't matter what your concentration of A starts at. It's always going to decrease by the same amount because the reaction itself is the zero order all the time. So there's an infinite number of these, these integrations we could do. You got zero, first, second, third, fourth, fifth order, and all that. The AP really focuses on three. So these three graphs you really need to have memorized. And before I do these graphs, let me just kind of go back and interject one, one little thing here. When we, when we deal with integrated rate laws, most of these problems are going to have, most of them are going to be decomposition. That, that is not a requirement. Okay? I just want to, I want you to notice that because when we do these these time graphs we really can usually only measure changes or effects for one reactant at a time if we were to do two reactants at a time in a different reaction let's say for example that I have a plus B goes to products and I wanted to measure the concentration of A versus time just A. Well, B has some effects too. So we need to come up with a way to, to kind of take B out of the equation. And we do that by making it excess. And I don't mean a little excess. I mean a lot of excess. So in other words, if you're running like 0.1 molars, you may want to make this 10 molar or something like that. So that the change in concentration of B is essentially zero. Not exactly zero, but really, really, really small. And when we do that, we call that a pseudo-order 
I'm not going to do any problems with pseudo order and uh, you won't on the AP exam either but I know a couple of the labs you may do would be pseudo orders. I mean unless you're doing a decomposition reaction you have to do pseudo order stuff. All right back to these our three graphs. So the orders that you have to know are zeroth order, first order, and second order. They fit a pattern after that and but, you, but again you don't have to memorize them. And so these are all they all share a couple things in common. They're all time based on the ind independent variable on the x axis. So they're all versus time. And the only thing that changes is the function along the y axis. So if it's zero order, all that you have to um, put on the y axis is the concentration of A. And your graph will look something like what I showed you above that linear change okay so that is zeroth order now the one that's that's the most common is first order and what you're going to see on this axis here is the log natural log of A the concentration of A and when you see that one it's all also going to be linear so it's the natural log function. This is where calculus comes into it. It's beyond the scope of our course here. We'll derive it in class for those who are interested in calculus. But I find that there's just not enough students in AP Chem who can follow the calculus. So I'm not going to burden you with it. So just know that we have we, what we would have is a function more like this under normal conditions. And then if we take the, the, um, the derivative, actually no, we take the integral of that, this is integrated rate law after all, um, then we can linearize this if we graph the log of A versus time. I know it's it's kind of out there. And then this third one, second order, a little different, it's one over the concentration of A. And if we do that, so this is going to be an integration of that function, of a second order function, and what you get is now a straight line. I promise it's straight, but with a positive slope. Now, why? Again, it goes into the integration of a second-order differential rate law, just like this one goes into the differentiate. Uh, sorry, the integration of a first-order differential rate law. You just kind of have to take my word for it if you haven't covered that stuff in calculus. But if you want to go through the calculus, please call me or email me or come by class, and we will go through the calculus. All right, well, that's good information. I told you to memorize it. I'm sure you will. Now you're thinking, what the heck do you do with it? Well, from this information here, this is the basis of what we call the integrated rate laws. And here is what you need to remember. From each of these graphs, you're remembering the y-axis, the y variable associated with each. Time is the same for all three. All you have to do now is plug that information into the equation for a line. You'll notice by, by using our calculus here, in each one of these, we linearized the function so that we could use it in an algebraic way. <clears throat> so watch what I mean by plugging into the equation of a line. So for a zeroth order, I'm just going to plug in y, x, my slope, and the y-intercept. So the first one, my y-intercept here is going to be A, okay? So just the concentration of A. Now, the slope of these, I haven't mentioned yet, the slope of these is actually our rate constant. Remember, as long as the temperature is constant, we're good to go. And so that's actually a negative slope, so negative K negative k and over here is a positive k. So it's the same rate constant and so for this one we go in negative k. Now our x variable is time so negative kt and then our y-intercept is going to be the concentration of A 
and we give it the naught symbol, which, which stands for time zero at the beginning. And then just to kind of round this out, most people put a little T there to remind you that you're looking for the concentration at time T. So if this is five seconds, you know, five seconds over here, you're looking at the concentration right there. So you want to go over and find it. And that's it. That's your zeroth order rate law. There's no quote unquote memorization to this. A lot of students bog themselves down with trying to memorize this equation when you simply do not have to. You memorize these charts. So knowing what makes a zero order linear concentration versus time, and you already know the equation for a line, you can make these equations. Let's go ahead and make the other two real quick, just so we have it. So for first order, we have the natural log of A at time t. We still have negative kt, same slope, same variable, and our intercept is just natural log of A at the beginning. See how close they are together? They're really simple. They're really, really simple. And then the second order rate law, this one's a, just a hair more challenging to remember, but our y is that 1 over A at time t. And here's what gets most people. This is, remember, it's a positive slope, so maybe you could count, you could say that's something you have to remember. Kt plus 1 over the initial concentration of A. And that's it, folks. That's what, you, what people call the integrated rate laws. You may see them in other formats, so don't let that confuse you. I'm not going to put them all in different formats, but do let me write the first order in another very common format. So what people do is just sort of rearrange the equations. So if you'll follow me here, I'm going to subtract log of A at time zero from both sides. So I'm going to get natural log of A at times T minus the natural log of A initial. And that equals negative KT. And then using the property of logarithms, we can say the natural log of T over the initial. So just like that, make a fraction out, make a quotient out of that. That equals negative KT. So some people learn it like that. <clears throat> That form for first order has some merit, uh, especially as we apply it to nuclear decay and, and half-lives and things like that. All right, well that is sort of where all that stuff comes from. So put that to the side if you need to, and let's do just a couple of practice problems using those equations because that's where our students get stressed the most. Let me get my calculator preemptively here. All right, let's jump right into this. Determine that the reaction of Schickel uh, goes to Hickel plus Hickel is zero order with respect to time. If I begin a reaction with 0.2 molar Schickel, all right, so 0.2 molar, what is that in terms of y equals mx plus b? Hmm. How much will remain after 100 seconds? Again, what is 100 seconds there in, in that form? The rate constant was found to be this so that we we have to know the rate constant from all that the most important thing for you to take away is that right there it's zero order okay so now you go to your memory banks and you go okay I know what zero order means that means the concentration of a versus time is linear like that that's it and so the integrated rate law as we did before concentration I don't know why I'm writing a here let's write trickle of uh, CO3 at times T equals negative KT plus the concentration of Schickel initial. All right, so where's our question? How much will remain after? How much will remain? Well, it looks like we're looking for that right there. If that is our answer, what we want to solve for, then we need to plug in all three pieces of this information. So let's start with negative k. k was given to us. Remember k is not ever going to be negative, but that negative sign needs to be there nonetheless. All right, we've got a hundred seconds, so that will conveniently get rid of our units there. And then our initial concentration, if I begin at 0.2 
mold it. Folks, that's it. That's all we have to do. So let's get the calculator out. And let's do 0 0.00043 times 100. And then plus 0.2. And I forgot my negative sign, so let's start that over. Negative point zero 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 four three times a hundred. All right, now plus point two, and we can see the concentration should always be lower, always after the reaction progresses for a certain amount of time. And that's it. A little bit less than point two. All right, let's go to a first order problem in number two. So we've got the decomposition of dinitrogen pentaoxide at 70 degrees. As long as that's constant, we don't really care what the value of temperature is. And we get K. I just noticed a unit issue in that last problem. Let's go back and revisit that because that could be potentially confusing. I just kind of glossed over it. If it's zero order, K can't be in those units. It has to be molarity per second. And so as I plug in here, it should have been molarity per second so that when I add these numbers, it's molarity plus molarity. So the number is right. I just glossed over a unit malfunction there. Need to fix that. All right, so this is the correct unit for K here in first order. We start with, all right, so this is my initial concentration and then a volume of 2.5. Well, that 0.03 moles is not a concentration yet. It's just a moles. So we can quickly convert that into a molarity. 0 0.03 divided by 2.5. Two point five liters, so zero point zero one two molar. <clears throat> All right, how many moles of N two O five will remain after two point five minutes? Remember, this is first order, so this is going to be natural log of N two O five at two point five minutes. Ah, minutes. Our K is in seconds, so we got a problem. We got to convert minutes to seconds or vice versa. I think it's easier just to convert minutes to seconds. Let's just multiply that by 60. That's 150 seconds. So 150 seconds minus KT, 150, and then plus the natural log in 205 at time zero. All right. I think I could have just left my moles in there. That's all right. So let's put in our negative 6.82, 10 to the minus 3. All right, times our 150 seconds. Plus our natural log of that concentration I probably didn't need to fool with. All right, so it's back to the calculator. Negative 6.82, negative 3, times 150, and then let's add the natural log, 0.012, and that does not look like the correct answer, because we would expect it to be less than 0.012 so let's go back and see where my math went crazy natural log of 0.012 okay plus negative 6.82 oh I'm an idiot when you grow up don't be an idiot. It's exhausting. All right, so that was not my final answer. So what that did was give me what the natural log of N205 
equals. What I have to do now is regret not leaving any space because I have to do the inverse of the natural log function to get this by itself. And that's actually going to be e to the natural log. On your calculators, you just hit second natural log and it gives you, usually on TIs, it gives you the inverse function. So that will just cancel that out. So, uh, so E, or N205, is going to be E to the negative 5.45. I turn this into a disaster. All right. So the concentration of N205 after 150 seconds is 0 0.0043. Molarity. And that's still not really what it asked for. It asked for moles, so we'll just multiply that times 2.5.011 moles, which is less than what we started with. That's what we'd expect, so we're good to go. All right, I'm turning this video into just an absolute epic saga worthy of an Oscar, so let's try to speed this up a little bit. All right, so part B, how many minutes will it take the quantity of N205 to drop to 0 0.005? Well, if I'm solving for time, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to plug in, I'm just going to plug in the numbers, just like into my integrated rate law. So we're going to have natural log. Now, I'm not going to fool around with going to molarity here. I want to show you that moles work too because the volume is constant. If the volume weren't constant, that wouldn't work. So let's plug in that. Uh, we've got K. K is not going to change. There it is. I couldn't find it for a second. Don't forget it's negative. Alright. We're solving for T this time, plus the natural log. <clears throat> of our initials. Let's go back up here make sure we're, we're pulling the moles since I left moles over over here. Alright, everything looks good there. So here we got this case where I could have used this form of the equation here. Natural log of time over um, the concentration at a certain time over the initial. So I'm actually going to do that just to save a little time here. So that's going to be the natural log, if you want to follow along here, 0 0.005 divided by 0 0.03. So that'll be negative 1.79 and that'll just equal my negative KT. And so I'll divide both sides by that negative K. And so that will be 200 and let's just say 263 seconds. Problem asks for minutes, so we'll humor the problem. Divide by 60. So four point, uh, we'll call it 4.38 minutes if we have to. All right, I don't really have a lot of time for this one, but um, yeah, so, yeah, we'll do it because half-life is the most common application of this on the AP test. So there's an interesting little thing here. If we go back to this uh, to this form of the integrated rate law, first order integrated rate law, what if we had half? What if we used up half of our original and had half left over? So what happens is that I can substitute in there when the concentration of A at times T equals the concentration equals one half the concentration of A at time zero. I can just sub that into my problem here. And so what I'll get is the natural log of one half times A initial over A initial. So this is when you've used up exactly half of your initial. Well those just cancel out and that leaves me with natural log of one half which is a constant. That's an absolute constant. So if we look at our calculator here, 
and we take the natural log of one half, we see that that equals negative 0.693. So if we put that in there, negative 0.693 equals negative kt, which is the half-life. Remember, that's the half, half of it's gone. Then the negatives cancel, and I'm left with a pretty interesting formula. Negatives go away. The half-life for a first order is just 0.693 over k, or k equals 0.693 over the half-life. These two are inversely proportional. The proportion is 0.693, which is that constant. The amazing thing is that this only works for first order. The other half-lives for zero order, second order, third order, and so on are, are a little bit more complicated because the concentrations don't just cancel out. Only first order does this happen. And what that means is that the half-life, the time it takes half of a substance to, dis to disappear, is totally independent on how much you start with. Completely independent of initial concentration. It doesn't matter. If it, ta it takes 10 years for 100 grams of uranium to decay to 50%, it would take 10 years for a million grams. It's totally independent. So if we want to find the half-life of this, particular N205, all we have to do takes 0.693, divide it by that K, 6.82, 10 to the minus 3, get my calculator back out, 0.693 divided by 2, all right, so the half-life for this reaction is 100, that's called 102 seconds, that's when 50% of it goes, let 102 more seconds pass, that's two half-lives, you will have a quarter of the original material. Let another 102 seconds pass, then you'll be left with an eighth of the original material. That only works for first order. And nature has taken care of radioactive decay. It turns out that all radioactive decay obeys first order kinetic. Beta, alpha, gamma decay, all that stuff you learned in pre-UP, every bit of it's first order and you apply it to that equation. All right, this video is remarkably long, so I'm gonna stop it here, and I'll do another video on how to use the computer to solve integrated rate law.